Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at ISC 13 in Leipzig, Germany, and we're here at the Micron booth. And I'm here with Dean Klein. Dean, what are you guys showcasing this year at ISC? Well, hi, Rich. Lots. We lots, got lots of stuff. Of stuff. Yeah, lots yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been talking about some of this technology for for some time. We've been talking about this thing called the hybrid memory cube. That's probably the first thing we ought to look at here. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Real hybrid memory cube silicon. This is a Gen 1 uh, demo board. Uh, we've got uh, two different package devices shown here, the, the four channel and the two channel device. Um, you can actually see we're actually running over here. Yeah, this is going 98 gigabytes a second right now. It's yep. a lot serious. Yeah. Sure, yeah, terrific. Good. And you were telling me that uh, you know there isn't a, today there isn't a motherboard you can plug in a prototype memory cube, right? So you built something expressly for that here. To, yeah, we actually when we designed this technology, we did something a little bit unique, and that we is we made it so it could test itself. So we can actually uh, hook. The, the links from one device uh, right up to uh, other links on that device and transfer data through the links and get the statistics off of it, uh, put different workloads in there yeah. and we can actually uh, see how the, the, the thing is going to perform in a real system. Yeah, yeah. So what are the advantages besides performance for this kind of uh, uh, device? Well, the big advantage here, of course, and the big buzz is about energy. Mm. Okay. Uh, so this is a lot lower energy uh, per bit uh, on, on uh, this system. Uh, especially as we look towards generation three of the hybrid memory cube, we're getting it down in the one and two picojoule per bit transfer types, types of energies, uh, and, and that's really pretty revolutionary. Because if you look at DDR3, you know we're up in the 20 to 30 picojoule per bit or higher, and uh, DDR4, you're getting better, but still not down in the, the range that we can get to with this. Yeah, and, and, and people might not realize, but a, a big supercomputer has a lot of memory, and that in aggregate can that can draw a lot of power just for the memory, can it? Yeah, and of yeah. course, you know, you, we're talking about supercomputers because we're here at mm -hmm. ISC, but yeah. it's not just supercomputers that are concerned about energy. Um, your, your cell phone is concerned about energy. You don't, sure. Sure. you don't have unlimited battery power there. So this is a technology that, that we do believe uh, grows over time and uh, grows into different markets uh, over time. So, so when would you expect it to come to market? Sometime in the next couple of years, or what? The yeah, hybrid memory cube is definitely on a path towards uh, high volume production in the 2014, 2015 okay, time. 2014. Sure. And you know there are there are systems that are already in development. Uh, if you're familiar with the hybrid memory cube consortium, uh, you know that we've got over 100 members in that. A lot of interest, a lot of development happening. Uh, okay. It's um, okay. really revolutionary. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that, but but what's going on today with Micron? What are you guys showing here? Well, that's a lot, okay. <laughs> but that's not all. Yeah, we, we're uh, stuff we're, you can sell, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Over here, we got stuff we can sell. Yes. Uh, besides uh, all the, the standard DRAM products, these are NAND-based products. These are systems that Micron makes, uh, which we call solid-state drives, and that's uh, that's another bit of buzz around the supercomputing community. I don't think there's a new machine built today that doesn't incorporate solid state drives somewhere in its architecture. Of course, there are certain machines that, that make really big use of it, like uh, the Gordon supercomputer at yes. uh, UCESD. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're, they're using essentially what is a, a commodity-like SATA type uh, drive in, in those systems. But there's a lot of buzz around new interfaces on these systems. This is one I just have to show off. Yep. Uh, this is using a PCIe interface, mm -hmm. and it's a, a BI-8 PCIe interface. And this one uses MLC NAND for enterprise applications. And uh, density in this goes uh, up to uh, 1.4 terabytes. In, in, in one device like one that? One device. Wow. And device. what's the advantage of the MLC for, for enterprise? Does it uh, have to do with uh, well, really, data or protection? Yeah, or? The, the thing about MLC is it's lower cost. Mm. Okay, so in a card like this, where we have a lot of channels of NAND flash talking to the controller that then talks to the bus, we're still able to get really high throughput out yep. of this card. And, uh, but it's uh, at MLC prices instead of SLC. Okay. We're still offering SLC solutions as well. Yep. And if you want the ultimate in performance, that's your, that's your baby right there. But uh, if you want a higher density solution, so we get the, the higher density out of MLC, 
and uh, still excellent performance. This is the type of solution we offer. You know, and we were talking earlier about you know what happens when there's a little power drop or something in the enterprise. And like uh, this being solid state, it doesn't have momentum like a spinning disc might ride through something <laughs> like that. Uh, does this help there for that kind of a scenario? Or no? Well, we have we have solutions for that. Yeah, uh, we we have algorithms on the on the SLC card where that where you know, we can recover from unexpected power outages. Now, hopefully in a data center, you never have one of those, but, you know, things happen, it's okay? Happened. In the case of MLC, due to the way MLC cells are constructed and written, it's a little bit of a trickier situation. So what we've actually got on this card, you can notice on this top layer, we've got a whole bank of capacitors on this card, and what that's designed to do is to hold the energy up on the system for just the, the milliseconds that are necessary for that NAND flash to orderly complete its write operations. And it can and write it can up and save the data and... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Terrific. Yep. Okay. All right. So, uh, so for SSDs, right, uh, you know, HPC applications, um, yep. you're saying with the PCIe they're able to accelerate things and, and, and uh, uh, are they changing the way they write their code to use something like that? Well, I think or? that's uh, that's what systems like Gordon are, are designed yeah. to explore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, it's not just Gordon that's doing that. Uh, we do expect that these types of solutions are going to change the way checkpointing is done, for instance, which is a very common operation in the supercomputer world.